That must be okay. Perfect. Hamza, how are you? Hi, how are you? All good, all good. Hamza, if you just introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Hamza. <laughs> and what kind of experience do you have? I mean, not a lot. I used to do rental cars before initially. I think I did rental cars for maybe six, seven months. Then I took a eight or nine month break. And then mm -hmm. now I bought my own card, uh, Rotax Senior Max card. Super, super. Well, Hamza actually races at the same track as me. That's the Lucille karting track. That's what you see in the background over here. And how was the transition now from, from rentals to Rotax? How long have you done rentals for? Rentals was about maybe five, six months, something like that. All right. Yeah. And in, in that time, uh, what were the different uh, sort of sessions, championships? To, um, how, how far did you uh, take rental karting? I mean, uh, before it wasn't really possible to get a, like my own cart. Mm -hmm. It wasn't possible then. So we tried looking to see, I tried looking to see if like, I could competitively race anywhere else. And so after training, maybe four or five months in rental carts, I decided the, the first Qatar Championship started here. So I decided yeah. and see where, how far I got. Trying to see how far I went. Awesome, awesome. Now, you did academy sessions in rentals. Uh, you then did, as you mentioned, the Qatar Championship, which is uh, a national tournament. So... With your Rotax cart, uh, what were the biggest differences? <laughs> what, I mean, what there's a lot actually. Like, yeah. the first part is that the cart feels a lot lighter for some reason. It's like because it's a lot more responsive whenever you turn the car. Yeah. It feel, if like whenever you turn the car, it doesn't just like lag behind like the uh, like the um, rental cart. So like yeah. if you turn the cart sharply, then it, the front end is going to turn, and then you're going to break traction in the back, and the cart like. You, like if you turn a lot basically then if you're not playing throttle you can easily like spin the cart but in a rental car you can't really do that yeah the throttle as well you have to be a lot more careful with it throttle you can just smash it in the rental car it's not that big of a problem but doing that yeah. will send you spinning uh, th those are some really good points basically what you've discussed is the driving style is different and the main thing is you have a foundation to work with so in terms of the line, in terms of racecraft, you've got some understanding and you're not a complete beginner. Now, we've got some footage in the background. This is of today's practice session. This was very, very fresh. Believe it or not, I've got the timing sheets over here. This was at uh, 10 to 6 in the evening. It's now 9 p.m., so two hours ago. We're both fresh from the track. We're both in the same session together. And... Talk to me about the tires. What 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 type of tires are these that you're running? Um, running green Vega tires right now. Okay, They're, so XH3s. Uh huh. They're two sessions old. Yeah. Yeah, two sessions old. Um, that's about it, pretty much. The back tires. I feel like uh, I was running a different tire pressure this time. Before I was running, I think around uh, 14 psi. It was kind of high. Okay. So then after talking to people in the uh, Panic, they told me that it should be like somewhere like 9.5 in the back and no 8.5 psi in the back and then 9.5 in the front it should be like a little bit yeah. higher in the front. so i tried that in this session and the cart felt kind of weird because of yeah. the back tires uh, i i thought i think i couldn't really adjust to like the like how there was more grip in this session okay that well uh this was basically at sunset this was the fourth uh, cart owner session of the day so the track had some rubber laid, da uh, laid down compared to early on which was uh, two hours before four o'clock uh, what was the uh, biggest difference between the old tires because i think you had comet tires right uh, before this no they were actually they were still vega okay tires, all right uh, when i bought the car the owner didn't change them he so he just gave me the old tires and so i just i just thought that i'd use the old car old car tires for you know, the experience. Yeah. Did I get to understand the engine and the car and how it handles and stuff? And I mean, I was actually quite thankful that I could switch to the new tires because the old tires 
somehow, some way, like because the cart has so much power. Yeah. That, um, because of how old the tires were, on the straight, somehow the tires were spinning, as well. So I couldn't, I could never really put my foot down all the way. Gotcha. I always had to be very careful with the throttle. So, I mean, now thankfully, like because of the new tires, I can at least get to 100% throttle. Like on the exit over here right now, I could easily mm. get uh, full throttle. But before that wasn't really possible anywhere. Well, I'm taking a look at your lap times. In this session, uh, we had limited time, but to be fair, this was a personal best. 50.8, right, is what you managed. Uh -huh. 50.8 was done on lap number four, and that is the oh, very wow. next lap just over. You, you stopped on the side, right, because somebody broke down over here? Yeah, I stopped over here because uh, apparently Omer's cart stopped working. Uh, yeah. Amy actually stopped because Amy had messed with his cart. And she thought that he'd notice, but he didn't notice. And so he, his entire session just got wasted. No, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead to lap number four, which is, yeah, this is this is, this is is lap four, right over here. So it's basically just before you stopped. Yeah. Now, the main difference I see from your driving from the first time I saw you on track, which was a couple of weeks ago to now, is obviously the, the handling. You're very smooth with your driving. The first thing we look for whenever anyone drives a, a two-stroke car is hand position, right? Oh. What you'll find by habit, and, and this is a personal uh, thing from my side, I started from rentals holding the wheel very low. Imagine this is a clock. This would be uh, your four o'clock, and this would be your eight o'clock, right? Now, four o'clock, eight o'clock, it, it, it makes the cart quite sensitive in terms of steering, right? And quite twitchy, moves left, right. The moment you start putting your hand position up to, let's say, nine o'clock and three o'clock, you start getting more control and you'll get limited in your steering input, right? You can't turn the steering wheel as much as you can when you put your uh, hands lower. That's just, it's just the angle you hold it at. However, I was just chatting to some other drivers uh, in Rotax, and they hold it slightly higher. So they're almost going at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, believe it or not. What we're trying to do with 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock technique is something called the uh, push-pull, uh, right? So you can do this with me. If you hold your hands out as if you're holding the steering wheel, and let's say we're going through turn one. Turn one is a, a fast left-hander. So what you're actually doing with your right hand yeah, through turn one is you're pushing against the steering wheel, right? And with your left hand, you're ever so slightly pulling it. What, what you're essentially trying to do is bend the axle. <laughs> I mean, uh, theoretically, yeah, you're obviously not going to do that, but you're, you're putting a lot of pressure against the steering wheel. And again, it'll, it'll, it'll minimize the steering input that you put in. You've got fresh tires, yeah? So... Really, you don't want your steering wheel uh, to go beyond a few degrees of input, whether it's left or right. You want to keep a neutral steer at all times, right? There's so much grip on these tires, and the cart, you probably felt, it, it sticks to the track, right? No, I can't. Remember that? So, I used to have a cavity here. We're going to go ahead to turn one. Turn one, two, and three. Beautiful. Talk me through the braking, because based on the footage, are you braking for turn one? Yep, there's a bit of a break there. You're just on mute, so whenever you're ready, just come off, yeah? Uh -huh. I am, actually. Uh... You're braking for turn one. Let's just watch exactly where you brake. Boom. So first braking point you're actually doing uh, before the blue and white strip. And this is an ideal uh, spot, which you which you want to break the hit the brakes at. The reason is you want to think of sacrificing a bit of time on entry, so you can almost roll the cart now. So you you hit the brakes briefly, roll the cart mid corner, and when you're about halfway to the apex, right, you can start laying the power down. Sometimes, if you don't have the confidence to do that. 
hit the brakes, release the brakes now mid corner. And by the time we get to the apex over here, that's where you lay the gas back down again, right? What you don't wanna do is full speed through turn one, try and go flat out, miss the apex maybe, you know, if you carry too much speed, you go too hot into this corner. You see some drivers go off to the right hand side. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually why, like when the the when I've had the when I had the fresh tires, I actually had so much confidence in the tires that I tried yeah. to keep corner one like flat out. Yeah. And, and well, the curb in front, like as, like the curb right in front of us, like when you're taking the corner and the curb there, I had to jump the curb and then jump the second curb on the exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're experimenting the, the limits. And it's very fun, trust me. We've, we've all gone flat out once <laughs> with fresh tires uh, through turn one. It's just that kind of corner. The fastest way we've found through experimenting uh, is, is, is braking. And the reason you want to brake is so you can win that lap time back as you hit this curb. So what will happen is it, uh, there's... Um, it, there's basically a, a traction point where the cart will grip and you'll get almost a boost. And in this case, it's on this curb. So you lay the power back down, get on the curb, and it'll boost you out the corner. Now, there's two opinions of thought for turn two, because turn two technically is a very, you know, subtle right-hand turn. What you actually want to do, if we scroll back two seconds, is from the apex of turn one, drive to turn two in a straight line as possible. Yeah? Okay. Why do you think we should uh, drive towards that in a straight line and maybe not go around and things? Keep the car as straight as possible. Keep the front tires as straight as possible. Yep, that, that that's one uh, way. What about another way? Carry speed to the corner, to the next corner. Yeah, exactly. Uh, essentially, you're min you're reducing the meters right between turn one and turn two. We've got Oscar joining. What's up, Oscar? Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. Did you manage to? You found the meeting link, and you're able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it cost me a bit, but I found it. Gotcha. Well, for anyone watching, if you're part of the academy, uh, all you got to do, go to the calendar section and click on today's date and yeah, and you can join directly like that. So that's for the future. Oscar, just to brief you very quickly, uh, we're reviewing different drivers footage who've submitted for this week and giving about 20 minutes each. We, we should have about three drivers in total. We're starting with Hamza. Hamza's uh, uh, footage is in the background at the moment. We're then going to go over to to discuss your track and, and about your experience in karting. And we'll hopefully round out the session by about 10 o'clock or so, or 7 p.m. GMT. Okay, perfect. Super. Uh, we got uh, Gui, Gui Racing in the chat, or Guy. Um, looking forward uh, for you, looking forward to you joining. To forward to you. Joining, I'll just put that message in the chat for him. Join us, uh, Gui. I know you joined the academy last week, it was. Or no, actually a week before that. Hamza, let's recap back to turn one and two. So we said we want to drive towards turn two in a straight line as possible, so we reduce the meters. Remember, we're trying to carry all the speed. Don't spend unnecessary time going around the corner to the left. Go in a straight line as possible. Again, with this way, you're able to put minimal steering input, yeah? We barely turn our steering wheel. Turn three is tricky. Turn three is a fast right-hander. And talk to me about your braking for this corner. I'll just recap to, oops. Just get to turn three. Yeah, turn three. This corner? Yeah, turn three. So you're you're hitting the brakes just before the apex. Uh, yeah, because I feel like the cart was going a little bit too fast there. So I started braking. Yeah. And then I held the brakes all the way until about here, somewhere around here. And then okay. I let go of the brakes and then started feeding the throttle. Feeding the throttle again. Super. Well, you're on the right lines. 
it 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 will be quite impressive if anyone can uh, take turn three flat out. What I like to do actually is sometimes with fresh tires. Let's just uh, admit somebody else has joined. We have got uh, Omar. What's up, Omar? Omar Sleem. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Just just to brief you, we're going through everyone's footage. We're hopefully going to come to yours towards then. Uh, be sure to share me a link. I didn't receive yours from... I sent it uh, on WhatsApp. You sent it on WhatsApp. Try and send me a WeTransfer link so I can get it down. Oh, yeah. I tried. Yeah. It did not want to work. I can, I can try again, though. Okay. Try it. Maybe it's the file size. Maybe. Otherwise, no stress. I'll, I'll, I'll get it up from... Uh, from WhatsApp, no worries. Oh, Hamza, Hamza today was a rocket ship. I don't know what's wrong with this. We were just watching his uh, his footage, so we're going back to turn three. Did the race nice and early, and what what I really like is you've got confidence to ride the curbs. Yeah, a lot of new drivers who just start at the track, they sort of stay within the white lines, which is over here. And that's just a confidence thing. Use the curbs to your advantage. Use it to boost you out the corners. And especially on the fresh tires, you know, you don't have to worry about traction being an issue and things like that. Continue yeah, putting... Well, I was trying to yeah. like, save the tires as much as possible because I feel like whenever I went a little bit faster than the back tire, I was mostly worried about the back tires. I didn't want to degrade the back tires too quickly. Yeah. So, so I wasn't going as fast as I think I could. Rear tires will naturally wear more from... Uh, braking, right? Because brakes at the rear. And at this track, talking about the two hairpin turns, those are the heavy braking points. So with your style, though, I think you'll probably get like six sessions, six, maybe eight sessions out these tires until they're, you know, completely worn out. Uh, what you're doing well for the exit of turn three is you're using the exit curb. Now, for this, for this exit curb, it's not advised to go all the way to the edge because there's a, there's a drop, right? And sometimes your chassis can get caught in that and you damage the car. So, you know, up to the white line or just about halfway on the blue and white is, is acceptable. Coming up to turn four, so you run it in fast. That's a, that's a good effort. Now, what you'll notice for turn four, let's break down the entry. And the entry should be as wide as possible. You did a great example over here. You're coming right up to the track limits. Uh, if it's a if it's a championship, you know they expect you to have at least two wheels on on the track. So, you know this is pretty much acceptable. The reason you have a wide entry is then to actually take a middle apex or mid to late apex for the first right hander, and then cut inside for the second right hander. Right. Uh, Omar, I have a question. Tell me. So today, my tires were, they were dead. Like, they're done for. So next session, I'm doing one more, and I'm done. But yeah. I was getting 50, 52 twos, which my best is like a, a high 59. Is yeah. that because of the tires, or is that just genuinely because of my driving? Definitely because of the tires. Because in my experience at this track, you see at least two seconds between, uh, you know, tires being fresh and then being completely worn out yeah man like i had so much oversteer and mm -hmm. it, was, it was abnormal let's uh, uh, l l let's look at your footage later look forward to, to seeing that i can i can go downstairs and get the camera for today's footage because i have past footage if you want. go for it go for it because it's in the car the car might not be here it might be with my driver no worries go for it bro Sorry. and uh, we'll we'll review after Four and five, I would actually prefer, you know, I see what you've done here, Hamza, is you've skipped the first apex and you prioritize rotation for uh, the, the second apex. Over here. Something that you can try is taking uh, a bit more curb, right, for, for, for these two corners. You'll see there's ever so slight uh, tire marks, and that's because... Drivers, you know, use all of the track. So feel free to stay on the same line, but just tighten it up. That's all. Uh, any any questions for, for, for the sector? Hamza. 
yeah um this this sector was kind of like uh, this one was like the one i had the most problems with because um whenever i would come into the corner the hairpin before the long straight at the end i could never really figure out where i should have positioned my cart yeah so i could get an exit from there and also the tires i think i might i should have put more uh pressure in the tires because the tires felt weird coming into the corner and the car would always yeah. like oversteer for some reason, for no reason yeah well oversteer sometimes is just because you're carrying too much speed so feel free just to delay the the throttle input sometimes especially on on these set of tires everything is going to feel a lot more sensitive right and remember this is a very powerful car you got so you are going to uh have that extra power available and let's just admit gui or guy hey what's up guy can you hear us Yes, guy, just if, yes, hello, hello, hello. Sorry, sorry, my microphone was off. I do apologize. How's it going, guy? Not too bad, bro. Not too bad. So, is it guy or gui? I get it's confused. guy. It's guy. It's guy. It's guy. Amazing, right. amazing. Welcome, welcome. This is the first track help session you're joining. Are uh, you joining us from where? I'm joining uh, joining from the UK. Um, at my house at the, currently. Um, finished up Excellent. a couple of videos, doing editing, having a good day. You know, that's how it works. Super, super. Well, just to fill you in, guy, we're reviewing everyone's footage in about 20-minute blocks at a time. We're starting with Hamza. We're going to end with uh, Oscar. Uh, there should be Omar and some, some other drivers as well. So just sit by. Feel free to input as well whilst we of course. review footage. And we're happy to have you. Very good to be here. Very good to be here. So, Hamza, going back to sector one, we're coming to the most tricky corner, I'd say. So this is turn... Seven and eight starts with number one, a very tight entry. Yeah, if you look at the track width over here, there's no more than two wide. If you go to the, to the races, and it's a chicane, so it's a fast left. You can see we've got a bit of curb on the inside into a sharp right. And I have to say, again, very very acceptable your 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 line you did there. Uh, talk me through this corner. What were you doing? I, I mean, I wasn't really thinking that much of this corner. Okay, it's, let's I, let's break it down from the entry. So we're entering. It's a fast left. Yeah, here I never really braked. Um, right before this, like, uh, right before the court, this corner. Yeah, here. No, uh, here. let me just put it over here. This one, right? This is. Yeah, here. I, 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 I didn't break here. I kind of like held 50% of the throttle here. Yeah, okay, okay. And then like uh carried the speed until that corner over there. And then from that corner I go me through your entry because what you're doing is you're coming up to the white line. Now normally uh, drivers who are who are new to the track, they'll stay actually within this uh section because in real life it, it's so tight, you feel the moment you ride this curb, you know, you can you can get thrown off. The cart loses balance. Yeah, yeah. that's what happened yeah. in the last session. Too. Uh, I think the second session, I took way too much curb here and just like on the right. Yeah. Did you go over it? Yeah, I went. I got beached on it and I spun. Okay, well, you see, if you don't spin, you're not pushing hard enough. So don't worry. That's uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> you won't do that again. But how was the chassis after that? Because I don't know. I ch I checked the chassis from the bottom. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. For this corner, we prioritize early braking. The reason you want to go for early braking is to actually mount this curb, right? If you look at the top drivers in uh, the championships that they have, you can see the remains of their, of their tire marks. They're hitting this curb very aggressively and they're boosting over to the next curb. So they jump over the screen section. Uh, that means half of their cart is, is is going over this curb. Isn't that um, painful for the chassis? Though? Believe it or not, it's it's about the angle that you do it on. If you hit it at the wrong angle, yeah, definitely your your alignment will be will be slightly off. But there's the exact angle that you got to hit this at. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, it get, it wins you time because that that boost gets uh, gives your cast uh, 
a boost. And what they're trying to do is, you see how the next corner is immediately a sharp right? They try to jump on the curb on the left so they can be more on the left-hand side of the track. So they're opening up the angle of the right-hand turn. Yeah? When you open up the angle of this corner, you can get on the power earlier. And remember, this leads on to, crucially, a back straight. So really, you don't want to be laying the power down here sort of like coasting through the left, right? That's that's a common thing I've seen drivers do. You actually want to be on the brakes early, jump over this curb, and now stay on the left-hand side of the track. Stay on the left-hand side of the track to open up the corner and then slingshot, cut to the right-hand side. What will happen is you'll naturally hit a late apex, and your late apex is, is sort of as the turn... Uh, ends. If you go too early, you might have experienced this. Let's say you hit it slightly earlier, you'll get thrown out wide. Yeah, you go towards the outside, and because they removed for our practice sessions the outside curb, you know you're you're just gonna go off on the green part. Now in the championship, there's they add a huge curb over here, so if you do go too hot, you'll get punished for it. You can't will. Uh, you either have to slow down a lot or you take take the bump. Coming down to the hairpin, talk me through the hairpin now. You're quite confident with these two corners coming up? Yeah, but I, feel, I still feel like I do lose some time here. First hairpin or second hairpin? The first one, right after the long street. Yeah. Well, first hairpin, it's all about how late you can break. With fresh tires you'll see the top drivers break as they get onto this blue and white strip. Uh, like normally, I'm... hey, what's up? Uh, first of all, I can't get the footage. My driver has the car. Second of all, I saw I saw that Hamza is taking not the first hairpin, the second hairpin too wide. Okay, well, we're going to get to that. That's, that. that's a good spot. So normally you'd break on the green just before the blue and white. With the fresh tyres, Build the confidence, you know, use these sessions to slowly get deeper and deeper onto the corner. Uh, how are you pressing the brakes? I mean, uh, I'm just smashing it, like all the way down. Okay. Yeah. And then do you break into the corner? So is it hard braking? Yeah, I, I, I hold the brakes all the way until, uh, until the apex. Until the all apex, the, okay. Yeah, until here. So, you, so you're trail braking. So that's the technique we want to do in these cards. And what you'll find is the harder you break, especially at turn nine, this hairpin, the more load is going to go on the outside tires, right? Because you're turning to the right. Your, your body weight is also going to the left over here. So really try and load these tires. What you want to do is use that to get rotation in the car, right? As I said, going back to your steering wheel, we barely want to put any steering angle in. You almost... You know, in fact, want to be counter steering. See how you're turning right over here? If you're loading the outside tires with your body weight, with hard braking, you'll actually be steering a bit to the left, right? Although it's a right hand hairpin. So play around with that. Going ahead to the second hairpin, let's see your entry. So you're coming deep into the corner, you're braking just after the curb on the right hand side. And yeah, this corner is, you see, it's half the speed of the previous hairpin because look, we're exiting the hairpin and we've got a very short straight to, to turn 10, the second hairpin. What you want to do here is either late braking, which you can afford on, on fresh tires, or go for the classic slow and fast out where you get on the brakes nice and early. We actually get on the brakes just before this curb on the right side. So, so sacrificing a bit of time on the entry. And what you want to do is aggressively get back onto the accelerator. So you've slowed the car down already. Get onto the accelerator and really target this curb. You have to ride this curb. So you see all these black uh, tire marks? Oh, this is... That you need to be putting the front left tire uh, over, right? Gives you a boost. It also 
minimizes the distance you're taking through this corner and ultimately sets you up for a better run to sector three, which we're coming up to. Uh, any doubts for the second hairpin before we move on? The second hairpin, yeah. I mean, uh, Omar was saying that I was taking it way too wide. Am I really taking it too wide? Wide? Or? Like, in this case... You see, because I'm trying to get a, a late apex. Late apex. Want, uh, if if you want late apex, you go for a late turn in, right? Simple as that. Your your entry, yeah, it should be wide. But really, if you were wide, I would see your tire right up to the white line. I'd say you're actually quite narrow over here, if, if you're really talking about track width. Yeah, because look, you're not coming all the way up to the outside line. The white line on the outside dictates the limits. So if you're very wide. You'd, you'd be putting two wheels over over this line. So you're not doing that. Maybe on a... Remember, you guys were both on track together. Maybe he observed that for <laughs> when you're driving. Exit curb. Nice. You're riding it over here. You have to ride that curb. You can see the black markings. That's just the nature of this track. It gets tight over here. Coming into the left. Now, <laughs> I, I remembered what you told me a couple of weeks ago. How on the used tires you weren't able to go full speed, yeah, through here. No, no. What would I just have a, a ton of wheel spins and then on the entry of the corner coming up after the, this, this like uh, mini straight. Yeah. Coming into the corner as soon as I started breaking the back end, since I'm going left. Yeah. And I couldn't really control the car, and then so I I I sort of like over overshoot the corner on the exit. Well, I'll I'll tell you what. Um, the the section that we're dealing with over here, it's not exactly one perfect straight line, right? It goes from right to left. And you really need to pin your foot to the floor on the throttle. You've got the fresh tires, you'll grip. And have a firm grip on the steering wheel. Because the car, naturally, as you turn left and right, it'll want to dance around, it'll twitch. Yeah? So firm grip on the wheel. Try and keep it as straight line as possible. You did that in this case. And the braking, believe it or not, for the sharp right, I believe you can go a bit later. So, for example, I'm just paused it at the, at the frame where you broke. Uh, this is a good meter before the curb, right? So try to, again... In the last session, actually, yeah. in the first one or the second session, I tried braking at the curb. The okay. Fucking curb. I tried breaking there and it didn't work. I started. Yeah, working. that is a bit too late. That is a bit too late. So what you want to do is approach the curb. Let me try and get the freeze frame. It's about here. So you see, we're just before the curb. That's about the limit. Now again, it's uh, based on driver styles. Who can who can press the brakes harder? Who who transfers the the weight to the outside tires? Remember, it's a combination of that. It's not just about braking and things like that. Uh, or who can break the hardest, yeah? Can you transfer the weight to the outside tires? Because as you turn right, yeah, the natural force is pushing your weight to the left. So you're loading these tires with grip. You have to get the outside tires loaded. Are you leaning in the car? That's one thing I want to ask you. Yeah. How How is it compared to rentals, but now in Rotax? I mean, it's not much different, to be honest. But I mean, I don't really, like, when I'm going through the corner, I'm not, like, um, like, in the rental car, I was trying to put the weight on the outside, but, like, in, in the real tax, not really, not much. I think I but, might not be leaning as much as I should be. What you'll find is, in real tax, you don't have to lean as much, right? The cart is very flexible, it's a lot lighter, and even just sitting still, right, maybe moving your shoulders, um, is, is sufficient, right? Uh, you're also a taller driver. So naturally, you know, there is going to be more weight transfer. You're more upright in the car. Final sector. So what we're trying to do over here, as we said, try and break deeper into the corner, load the outside tires. One small thing, if I'm nitpicking, try to be on the curb and go for a late apex, right? So just one more time. You're entering in a straight line. You can't see too well because the angle is a bit low. The camera angle is a bit low. What you want to do is almost a V. So you go almost as if you're going to crash into those barriers. And at the last moment, then you do a sharp turn in, right? So you look towards the barriers at the outside. At the last moment, 
do a sharp turn in and that will help you with achieving a late apex and, and, and going on the curb as we wind just, the lap. Yeah. Go ahead. Just a quick just a quick little thing. I, I I'm so I'm not a pro with Rotax, I've only done a couple of sessions, but I have a lot of experience in, in rental carts. What I am noticing one thing is that um what I've always been taught is when you're about to steer, yeah. I'm noticing he's going in and then coming back out again and then going back in again. What, what I've always been taught, might be completely wrong in Rotax, I'm not sure, is you want to try and set your steering so you have one continuous turn through your corner. Am I right? Or is that, or is yeah, that something yeah. different in Rotax? That's, a, that's very true. Uh, corrections, right? Is, corrections, is what, okay. No, so so no, no corrections where you go right, left, right. Smooth. Be there smooth. you go. Smooth is fast. Smooth is fast. No, exactly. There you go. Uh, and what that really requires you to do is have confidence in your line mm-hmm. you see sometimes when you're driving you're like okay let me turn now and halfway to the apex you're like ah it's a bit early so let me correct and yeah then, right so you got to be really you know, committed with your with your line and that that comes with experience 100 so, percent. Was, was what i've noticed in this specific example here is yeah i think because he, he had an initial turn in and then if he had kept that turn in he would have been close to the barrier uh, so close to the curb which is what you said yeah I, I could be seeing it completely wrong. See, so I'll show you. So like uh, here. Yep. And, then, and then he goes, actually, wait a second. No, 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 no. This is wrong. Yeah. And then that's, you need to, yeah. And, and then poss- it's a mini. And possibly if he had kept it completely on, he would have been close to the curb, like you said. Yeah, yeah I was I was doing that. That's exactly what happened, actually. I was going to the curb and then I thought that I would have overshot the curb. I would have, I would have managed to touch the curb, but I would have gone and sh- got like, got like the cart would have been pointed straight at the barrier. Of the uh, other side. Yeah, yeah. It just felt kind of weird, so I started yeah. getting a little bit wider. It's a very good spot, uh, guy. That's a very, very good spot because that's exactly what happened. I did something right. It's a miracle. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's why you're here. You, we we want your opinion. Thank you. I appreciate it. Final sector. Before we start the final sector, let's admit. Pierce, and we got Joseph. What's up, Pierce? What's up, Joseph? Okay. Can you hear us, guys? Hello, hello. Hey, what's up, Joseph? Oh, yeah, hi. Not so much. What's up, Pierce? Where are you guys joining us from? The UK. Excellent, yeah, excellent. Yeah. Are you both uh, related, or, or you just happen to join at the same time? Uh, we should both happen to same, join at the same time, I guess. Excellent. No, you sound very similar, that's right. So, oh. uh, Joseph and Piers, just to run you guys through, we're reviewing different drivers' footage that, that they've submitted. Uh, Joseph, have you got any footage you want to share for, for today's session, or you just want to join in mm-hmm. with the discussion? I was, I was just watching on the stream, just thought, join here, just kind of a bit better to just be in the actual meet. You're welcome, welcome. And how about yourself, Piers? Oh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't have a GoPro. So, no worries, no worries. Well, even if you if you don't have any footage, you have any questions, we'd be happy to discuss it with you guys. And uh, we'll just finish off the review of uh, of the drivers we got, and then we can have a chat, hopefully, all right? Super. Final sector, Hamza, then we're going to have to move on, all right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we went way off. It was supposed to be 20 minutes. It's okay, minutes. it's okay, it's okay. It, better do the whole lap than half. Final Final sector is really dictated by the final two corners. And the reason why the final two corners are very important is because it leads on to the final straight. And this exit you get will decide the back end of your lap, right? You can lose a tenth, you can lose two tenths, you can gain those tenths. So a couple of lines you can do. In this case, you've taken uh, a narrow entry, which is very similar to the rental cart line. A reason we go narrow in rentals is, is just to minimize the meters. It's got low revs as well. Uh, you're going... Relatively close to the first uh, right-hander or the apex and the final corner, you try to go a bit closer. I like what you're doing. What I do recommend in the future, though, is especially for the last corner, try to ride this curb. You can probably see the the black scrubbings. That's of other carts who've driven over this. So I tried it, yeah, I did try running on this curb. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure when it must have been in this session in the last session. I'm not sure when, but I started uh, when I was riding this curve. I realized that I could. I I, uh, I was getting a throttle later. You're getting a throttle later. Interesting. Okay. Um, what would happen when you press the throttle earlier? Because the uh, the back end would just step up while the 
because I tried to yep. get on thought of like as soon as the carp got off the curb. Yeah. But then as soon as I start feeding the throttle, then uh, the back tires would kind of like break grip for some reason. Okay. Well, I understand where you're coming from. And really, uh, that's, uh, you know, how you lay the power down. Now, for this curb, you can't be 100% on the gas uh, as you touch it, right? It has to be gradual. Uh, so you're feeding the power slowly. What you'll find is if you do it correctly, it takes a lot of practice. Uh, it'll slingshot you out this corner. And that's what we're looking for. Slingshot the car towel. I love how you're using all the track on the on the left-hand side as well. And that's going to set you up for a good lap. So to conclude, Hamza, you've got the foundations there. You're doing well. Keep it up. And especially because you put these fresh set of tires on, it's only going to be the next session or two where you're really going to benefit uh, from them. So what you want to try and implement in your next sessions is harder braking, right? Maybe even a bit later braking and try and transfer your weight uh, more to the outside of the corner, uh, out, out, outside tires. This will help you with rotation of the car. And as we, uh, well, as the guy uh, very nicely spotted out, try to work on avoiding the corrections. Yeah, smooth steering, something that we all got to gotta work on. Hamza, thank you so much for joining. What we're going to do is shift over to Oscar and just give us a moment, Oscar, as we're going to admit Muhammad. What's up, Muhammad? I was about to tell you to let him join in. We lost someone else as well. Hello. What's up, Muhammad? Hello. Have you got any footage you want to review? Um, oh yeah, session? I have. I have the link. I'm gonna send it to you. Oh, okay. Well, I think we gotta we gotta watch that then uh, towards the end. Yeah? yeah. Let me stop sharing and bring up the next section. Oscar, welcome. Hey everyone. Hello. Hi Oscar. <laughs> Hi Oscar. Hello. Uh, Oscar, where are you joining us from? I'm from Madrid, Spain. Excellent. Are you a Real Madrid fan? Or no, I, I, Madrid? I don't like football. I, I stopped <laughs> watching football some years ago because okay. I didn't really like it. Just give us one second, uh, Oscar, because the chat is right. I have not been reading the chat. We need to... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you need you, to can you... <laughs> No, it's, uh, it's it's the multitasking, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, let's let's go ahead and admit Connor. Connor, I've seen your request. Let's admit you. Right, don't it want... takes practice to be a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, streaming, huh? That's, yeah, uh... streaming, streaming is... People think it's easy, but I'm telling you, it's difficult, bro. It's difficult. <laughs> I, I wish I knew how to stream. Approve, approve. We've got Arnav, Connor, so many Harry, people, so many new faces. Marcel, yeah, it's super. What we're trying to do here, guys, is, is build a nice community of uh, of drivers from yeah. around the world. At the track that we race at, we got a very nice community as well. We got Muhammad, we got Omar, we had Hamza as well who joined. But it's nice to see everyone else's uh, footage and experiences as well. So, Oscar, how long have you been karting for? Well, I started karting, but uh, uh, not very much when I was a kid. And then I stopped in my uh, young years. I'm 29 now. So I started Easy. competing in mid-21 in October. Yeah. I, I, I start, participated in a, in a rental car championship. And we had like a monthly race in different circuits around Madrid and the other regions of the of the central area. Yeah. And I've been doing that since 2021 and also like the uh, track races. Mm -hmm. like separated from a championship because that helped me to improve a lot seeing other uh, people with uh, much more tasks than me. Yeah. You know, much a, a, a higher level that made me learn quicker. How is the karting scene in in Spain? Because I I'm I know you have F1 drivers, you know Fernando Alonso, yeah. Carlos Sainz. <laughs> you must yeah. have a yeah. lot of support for karting, right? 
Well, I, I don't have too much experience. I have only been doing this for a couple of years, almost three. But uh, what I got to know is that some years ago, it wasn't very popular. And yeah. now, for example, in Madrid, it is rising uh, uh, surprisingly well. Like yeah. uh, we have four or five different championships only in Madrid. Wow. And we also have championships in Catalonia which is at, yeah. the, at the north uh, east of Spain. Yeah. We also have in Valencia, which is as the, at the east. We also have in the north, in the south. So, like, every region has its <laughs> own <laughs> championship. <laughs> and, and that's quite cool, because some years ago, not many people did this kind yeah. of things. And now I think it's becoming more and more popular <laughs> and therefore more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that, that is a good point. I think a lot of people join from uh, like watching F1 and obviously F1 have that series on Netflix. So they get inspired to to do some kind of racing and karting is, is very accessible in all countries. And you, you, you very uh, nicely shared your own footage because you, you record it on a uh, is it uh, every session basically you record, right? With your GoPro, with your camera? Yeah, when it works, I record every race. Well, here we have it. If you talk us through, this was a oh, very, no, This very... is my kind of stuff. This is rental karting. Yeah. Don't worry. Everyone uh, everyone from now should be rental. So we're, we're on the same page. Uh, let's get some audio. Can you guys hear some audio in the background? I can, I can hear the, the, the cars, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That is a very tight track. Very busy track. Yeah, yeah, let me, yeah. let, me let me tell you about the track if you want. Of uh, course, I can of give course. you some details. So this is in in Rivas, which is a town at the southeast of Madrid. It's about 15 kilometers away, mm -hmm. and it has two floors. So we start here in the uh, down section. Two floors, wow! And this is not the finish line. The finish line is further ahead. Okay. I think we have a, a delay in in tech night, you know. All right, let's just watch. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. What's up, Tech Oasis? Who is Tech Oasis? It's kind of crazy the delay. Yeah, it's from him, I think. Tech Oasis. Okay, Welcome. yeah. Oasis. Much better now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so this was a race at at Rivas. It was twenty minutes long, and uh, yeah, the track is very tight. So we tend to call it uh, Monaco Karting. Tech Oasis, can you hear us? I think he's got some issues. Yeah. Can you hear us? All right. He, he left. Uh, he left. Yeah, he yeah. had some issues. No worries. So basically, we've started the race. You were in P... Uh, P4. P4. Oh. Uh, also, one one important thing to mention is that as uh, it's very difficult to overtake in this track, yeah. we had the option to do a long lap through one of the runoff areas, and every driver had to do it um, between lap two and lap eighteen. So okay. as I I had traffic in front, I decided to do it early. Well, we're going to come up to that lap. I think it was lap what two? You saying two or, lap or three? Two, yeah. Lap two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have oh. to defend a little bit because uh, a driver pushed me a little bit, but it was okay, and I could carry on. So this is the upper level. Yeah. And this is a very hard corner. Uh, wow. Oh wow! That's a, that's, a, that's a sweeping corkscrew almost. Yeah, yeah. It's more than three hundred and sixty degrees. That's crazy. It's very physical. Very so. <laughs> Immediately, what I'm noticing here. Oh Take <laughs> <laughs> away, sis. You want to mute the mic? I think it's. <laughs> yeah, I think I it think is tweaking. It <laughs> <laughs> so immediately, what I'm noticing here is it's gonna it's gonna be one of those one of those tracks where it's gonna be getting as close to the barriers as you physically can. Yeah. Immediately, and, and I'm noticing that. Yeah, and also touching them. Yes, because you. <laughs> But because I have this saying, I don't know if Omar agrees with this, so this thing called, um, I call it soft barriers and hard barriers. Barriers that have a little bit of flex that you can actually move a little bit if you touch them. 
Yeah. And exactly. Barry Zetto, just if you touch, you're going to slow yourself down. I don't know if you yeah. have that at your local track, Omar. Yeah, you, you will see uh, that in the videos. Yeah. Oh, we've just seen the... Uh... The Joker lap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what happened with you just understeered here or you? No, no, no. I was going to the left because I wanted to lose as la less time as possible. So I had to go to the left in in order not to crash with with the driver in front. <laughs> and you with went straight on. Yeah. Yeah. So and you basically lost all your positions now. Is that correct? Uh, well, yes. Uh, so, uh, I was supposed to be last right now, but as everyone else has to do the same. I was like uh, in second place, virtually second place, you know? So, wait, so am I saying that it, it, it's, it's what we call a joke lap, where, where you can skip out some of the lap what, yeah. once every race? Yeah, this is what's happened here. So, Omar, I think you did that on purpose. Is that yeah. correct? Uh, let me just go back. Yeah, I, I did it on purpose because I yeah. knew I, I had to do it early so that I didn't lose time because I had uh, three cars in front of me, you know, so in, I in had to be That was beginning. a really smart move because that means you have loads of clean air here where exactly. if you are fast, you can just keep going, gain as much gap as you can at the very beginning and then other yeah. people can't. Then, and, and when they do their joke lap, you're too far in front already because they've been battling with the people behind you. Mm. Small. Yeah. Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> 200 <In fact, laughs> uh, The driver which uh, started first, he finished fifth because he did the Joker lap very late. So yeah. I think that cost him the race. Yeah, you see, look, so look, there you go. Yeah, was yeah. that, was that so the Joker now, lap now? Now I'm third. Yeah, third. Okay, this is third now. Wow. Yeah. Well, and I, that's I, the thing. I'm second, but I will be third. Sorry, I'm second now, and yeah. and he is first. What's your mindset so, at this point in the race? Well, uh, try try not to make mistakes because any tiny mistake can cost you a lot of time. So I try to be as consistent as possible, and and try to follow the car in front and get close to him. But I wasn't able to do it in this race. I, I was feeling a little bit tired also because I was there for the whole day yeah. uh, because I was doing steward uh, organization, you know, and yeah, yeah. I had to watch for the other races too. So this was about uh, half past four or five o'clock and I was in the track since 10 o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what so, were you, you saying, Dave? So... From what I'm hearing is the the throttle control is going to be quite a key factor in this track, purely because of how tight it is. I feel you don't want to do as much braking, but then you're going to lose all of your momentum. Well, you um, have you have to brake hard in some parts, and in others you even have to trail brake. Yes. Will you will you will you tell me as we go around this next lap? What, like, I, but it's quite, I, I'm quite stupid. Are you breaking? Um, just tell me where you're breaking, if that makes sense. Yeah. Let, let's share no, the screen no and we get some arrows on as well. Um, yeah. I can come just, in just, just, just before we start, guys. Uh, what's up, Connor? Connor's just joined. Connor, you were in the chat. Not. How's it, brother? How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, all good. I wasn't reading the chat, huh? <laughs> no, all good. You're in. You're in. You're in. Co Connor, do you have any footage you want to share with us, or you just want to join in? I uh, know, honestly, bro. I'm just getting into karting, so I was. Want, yeah, I wanted to ask about a kart. Um, Super. Yeah, but I'll let you review your footage. I'm not going to go steal away from Oscar. No, no, no. we're, we're going to finish uh, driver by driver, and then we'll definitely come to you for for some questions. Awesome, no stress, brother. Appreciate it. Oscar, I believe we've. Is this the start of the lap coming up now? No, this is an old section of the track, which used to be mm. the starting point uh, some years ago, but they changed it. So Can now the, the, the finish line is, is uh, right after the pit exit. I'm just trying to find it. It's the lower floor, right? It's, yeah, a, a little bit before, like 10 seconds before. Yeah, right now, after nah. this. So here, right here. This is the finish line, um, wow. and now we have the first corner, which is usually taking flat out, but in here I was noticing there was a bump, so sometimes I had to lift. 
Uh, feel free, guy. Yeah, to go. To, to, how do okay. you overtake? Sorry, how do you overtake? How do you overtake on that track? Yeah, that's my <laughs> question. <laughs> right, yeah. No, I, I genuinely. Yeah, I'm not even trying to be funny. I ge- I genuinely want to know how do you overtake on such a narrow track? It, it, depends, you know, on the drivers, it depends on the it drivers. It depends on the drivers, and you know, sometimes you have to be very aggressive. Yeah, I, I, I was about to send. I'm guessing dive bombs are going to be like your only opportunity here. And is, is there a hairpin? I, I think we've seen a hairpin, have we? Yeah, You're sometimes just... uh, a good spot is this one to the right. Yeah. Sometimes you can see overtakes there, but uh, also down here to the to the right. Sometimes drivers dive there. And yeah. Pass. But in this section, it's impossible because it's flat out. Yeah. So all this is flat out. All of this, and then we touch the walls a little bit, and we break like here. Uh, and there, I was trying to do trail breaking, you know. And, yeah. then, and then this section you, is almost impossible because uh, all the drivers carry the same speed. And then yeah. this is the third turn, and sometimes you can see drivers overtaking here, but mm-hmm. it's not very a good option because you have the uphill section and you lose a lot of speed and momentum. Of course, yeah. So if you try to overtake there, you will probably lose more time. And if you don't complete the overtake, maybe other people can overtake you. Yeah. So talk me, talk me through the weight. Just give us one second. One second. What's up, Anav? Hello. How's it going, Anav? Where are you joining us from? I don't from India. Amazing. Welcome, welcome. You know, we just had uh, a couple of drivers last week who were doing the Mumbai track. Which track is your local track? Uh, I don't do go-karting, but I do come to Qatar and do from in the Lucille track. Nice, nice, nice. You've done the Lucille track. When was the last time you came to Lucille? I came in uh, in March. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Anav, we're just reviewing Oscar's footage. We'll hopefully come to you soon and we can have a chat, all right? Uh, Amar, who's next after Oscar? We are going to go for your footage, it looks like, because uh, Omot has not joined. Yeah. Oscar, just quickly about the weights uh, for this, because you put this is a 68 kg. Is that your weight? Uh, that's the the weight of the category. So if, for example, you weigh 60 kilograms, you would need 8 kilograms of ballast. Mm-hmm. So I usually weigh around 61, 62 mark. So I have to put uh, between 5 to 7.5 kilos of ballast. Okay, okay. How have you found the ballast weight affects the driving and also your style? I mean, it's not a lot you're adding, but... Have you felt any differences? Well, uh, I, I usually have very little ballast, so there's not much difference. But in other races, I had to go up to 75 kilos, and I noticed the car pounds much more at the corner entry. Mm-hmm. And it uh, was very hard for me to control that. That's a very good point that you meant, made about the uh, the bouncing. Uh, yeah, you can what, see what? here. I was yeah, again, just, just through there. Oh, back to the barrier there. Yeah, that, that was a little mistake, you know. And uh, it happens to everyone. Little Don't mistakes worry about like that it cost you a lot of time in this track. I can imagine. Yeah, I'm, so- I, well, one of the key features that I'm trying to figure out, and that is, in my opinion, the rental carts matter a lot if they're Sodi, if they're Biz, if they're Sodi RT10s or Sodi. Uh, you know, RS fours, whatever, whatever carts they are. I can't figure out which cart this is. It looks like an, an RT10 from behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's an RT10. It's an RT10. Oh. Okay, I'm just double checking. So what I've noticed with the RT10s, and again, tell me if I'm wrong here, the brakes, um, unlike some of the electric carts that I drive, they are they they don't lock up as easily. Um, at least from what I've tried, um, especially. So I don't know if you ever been to Buckmore, Omar Aswat. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buckmore has the RT10s and, and trying to get a lock with those carts is very difficult. So oh. so from what I've noticed, as you explained earlier, trail braking is going to be really useful on this track here. And I think you're going to want to kind of have to amplify that smooth braking and smooth driving style, but then also put in a couple of kind of 
aggressive braking with 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 rotation yeah. to rotate yeah. the car so even more. Here we have yeah. to brake very hard. You know, yeah. we have to with a little bit of rotation so that we can exit in a straight line. It's so, almost yeah. it's almost a bit of a Scandinavian flick almost through that I've noticed. Yeah. It's kind of like a left and a quick right, and I. I I think possibly what I might, what this might work here is a bit of a later break actually into that first apex uh, to, to be able to rotate the car into the left and then go down the straight. Because I think straight line speed on the straight is going to be really important. Yeah, especially corner Absolutely. is the is the most important thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, also being able to rotate the car enough so that you can carry more uh, speed into the corner entry. Yeah. I think and it was very I interesting. Also, yeah. I, I want to say one thing, Omar. Uh, this is this is turn three. We are exiting turn three now. So here, okay. I'm right there where you post it. Let me just pause it real quick. So I'm trying to use my brake break in there. And the brakes here, yep. And, and try to carry the brakes until the vortex. And there I release the brakes and start accelerating. Right. So I try to do trail braking and, and release the pressure as I try to turn in. What's very interesting about turn three, though, is how the track goes uphill, right? Because look, boom, you're up a, yeah. um, a ramp over here. And obviously, you're still building up the revs here. So I guess exit speed is even more important. And if you're a heavier guy, I think you might struggle, right, going up the hill. 100% you would, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so how is it very, very... as we go downhill now? Because this winding right-hand corner coming up, now, this do you is feel the yeah. This is a very slippery surface, so mm -hmm. you need to watch out for that. And uh, and here we have Thanks like, uh, uh, yeah, we have a little bit of banking. And usually we take it flat out, but here I was lifting sometimes because I found that it was more useful for mm -hmm. me. And then here we have to break very late, to try to rotate the car, and then stay to the inside, to the closest to the right as possible. Yeah. yeah. So, so that you run less meters, you know. You of course you you run less meters and and you gain more time. How does the car behave as you go downhill, winding right? Does it feel uh, slippery and less grip? Yeah. Here, here you can see it bounces a lot and yeah, whoa, look at that. It naturally tries to push you to the left, so you need to to put a lot of tension in the wheel mm -hmm. so that you can control the steering wheel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I, I think I think I explained, but uh, yeah, you need to apply a lot a lot of pressure and force in the steering wheel to control the car, and and then here you can release it a little bit. Of course. So overall, what are you struggling with this at, at this track? What is you feel the key parts that you know the others are doing? Yeah. Uh, well, this day I, I was feeling that uh, I wasn't doing my best. I wasn't hundred uh, percent physical. Okay, so, yeah, so your your mental state and physical state, yeah, that affected you. That was hard, and also I wasn't being very consistent. I have been much more consistent other other times. There okay. were a couple of laps which were like a three thousands of a difference, but apart from that. Uh, maybe one lap was 1024, 1020, 1017, you know, so very inconsistent. And also I was making very little mistakes and I was I was feeling I wasn't able to catch the guys in front. And yeah. I was thinking maybe it's because of the car. This car is lower than the rest. True. But uh, watching the footage, the footage later, I think it was um, a mix of mistakes you know, and little mistakes which cost me a lot of time. Yeah, I think when it comes to a race like this, it's all about you know trying to drive each lap as similar as possible. And you won't believe even a scrub of the barrier or going a bit deep into a corner, it might not seem like a lot, but you do that one, two, three times, you know, each yes. time that's too tense. And exactly. And, and what yeah. yeah. guy commented before that here I touched the wall, that I saw that, probably yeah. made me lose a couple of tens or maybe even more. In my experience, especially when I was, you know, starting karting, I'd make these mistakes in the race and the guys in front would slowly get further and further ahead. 
And mentally, mentally you're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not able to catch them. You almost give up. And, and that's the worst sort of mindset. And, and you've got to overcome that in, in the moment that get back onto the line. It's okay, you made the mistake, but just don't do the same thing again. And that comes with experience. You know, the more the, of these races you do, the different scenarios you'll encounter. Yeah, and you saw that. Fair, and yeah. yeah. You saw that. I touched the wall a little exactly. bit, so that very, was very another simple. mistake. And just watching, right. all right that there. was is you turning in ever so slightly earlier. So watch what happens. You're turning yeah, in early. Was, that was because of the bump, I think. And I was yeah. trying to avoid the bump, but I turned in too early. So <laughs> it was very hard for yeah, me. Yeah, uh, And I've noticed there wasn't much action. Apart from the first three laps, the rest of it, you were pretty much on your own. Yeah, well, the yeah. cart is about, you know, four or five seconds up the road. Just yeah, the first the first two laps were with traffic. Then I did yeah. the long lap, and then I had the guy in front of me. And on lap seven, there was another guy uh, coming right in front of me. If yeah. you want to review that, and then in lap eight they started to go away, and I was alone for the rest of the race. So yeah, yeah. not much action happening <laughs> because we were uh, like thirteen cars or so we were split it in two groups and mm -hmm. i was in the gold group so that was that was cool but yeah, yeah. we were 13 14 cards maybe 15 not not more than that i think just going forward then your routine for the race day you know you can try and customize it where I mean, of course, work is work, but if you're able to, you know, be more fresh before before you join, that's something you can add. And then, I think also the luck in in the card draw. How how was this uh, this card? Seventy five. Do, do you know if it's relatively good, average? Well, uh, this this race was in February, so mid February, yeah. and I I also did a race here like two weeks earlier. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a, a kid with cuts, cut, that car, 75, mm -hmm. and it was okay. I think he finished second or third, I don't mm -hmm. remember. But I was I was finding that it was much slower than car 766, for example, which was yeah. a rocket. Um, and I was uh, slowly losing time to the guys in front. So I was thinking mm -hmm. that was because of the car. It maybe it was related, but Absolutely. I'm not sure. I'm not sure now because you can see I did a lot of mistakes too. Yeah, I think before we, you know, say oh the cart was this and things, you have to look at your own performance first. And I'm I'm happy that you've acknowledged there are some improvements there. You know, and it's just consistency. The thing is, you're you're good in one lap, and it's about doing that same thing over and over again and be very precise. And in my experience, right. I felt having a cart who's maybe in front of you or one second ahead allows me to be more consistent because I'm just following him, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. If I'm out there alone and it's, you know, more freestyle, you, you do lose your focus. It's like the guys in front are too far ahead. Okay, the guy behind, he's not really threatening me, so I'll just do my own thing. And uh, you, be, you become lazy and, and, and sloppy like that. Yeah. So yeah. there's one thing I like to mention. And, yeah, yeah. and is that uh, when I was doing the qualifying, mm -hmm. I was feeling confident I could get a good result because I had done some races at this track, like six or so, yeah. and the yeah. other the other competitors did only one or two. So I, I was having an advantage there, mm -hmm. and I tried to lift cleaner in qualifying. Well, I, I was uh, the second driver to go to the track outside the box, you know, to okay. exit the box. Um, and then the driver in front led me through in the next lap, and then I, I stayed during the whole hit alone. And right. I was confident I could get maybe second or third, but I was surprised when I saw I was fourth. And maybe mm -hmm. if I had back out, you know, and let a, a faster driver through, through which I mm -hmm. know uh, which drivers are fast and which ones are slow, yeah. Maybe I could have got a better result in qualifying. I, I was thinking that, you know. Uh, and, a quick question. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. How often do you go to this track? Like, 
Uh, well, uh, I try to go every couple of months, but um, it's been three, three months since I don't go to this track. It's also uh, far away from my house, maybe 50 kilometers, so I cannot go very often. So, oh, that's fun. <laughs> so are you yeah. used to this track? Like, do you know the lines perfectly? Do you know how to work it perfectly? Because I can see that you can use more throttle, maybe rotate the car a little bit more. And let's break. Uh, yeah, I, I know the track well, but uh, they are changing the, the curves normally every couple of months. So every time you go, there's something different. Maybe you have to, to take new reference, new breaking points, new turning points. Like here, for example, this, mm -hmm. was, this was changed a couple of weeks ago when we are running this, you know. So uh, they, they change little bits of the track every, from time to time. So it's not the same every year, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you have to adapt very quickly, but yeah, uh, generally speaking, I, I know the track quite well. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can tell that with also your position and, and you being I mean, top five. Top five is always decent in, in, in any race. It's normally the experienced guys who are there. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, I wanted to win this race, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Next time, next time. Well, when, are, when, is, when is your next plan for, for a race or when are you going to go next? Uh, in four days, I, I'm running at this track, but we are doing it in the reverse uh, way. Ooh. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's this, all this, but the other way around. And then um, a couple of days later, I have another race, but in, in Guadalajara, which is a, a region near to Madrid, like uh, 80 kilometers away from my home. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a very bumpy track, so I had to learn very quickly. I have done two races previously there, um, and then I have another race in June, and um, maybe some more later, which I don't know which ones will be. Excellent, excellent. So, so make what, sure what you know to... of, of the race, if you can <laughs> see something, any tip you can yeah, give me. Well, 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 to conclude, I think terms of the line and things you've got it there right you've got a good understanding of, of braking techniques um you know the, the the kind of apexes you take for the corners i would say it's about consistency now that's one of the hardest things as yeah. a driver you you have to master because even myself you know i'm working on that every day because car to car especially in in, in rental car championships it is very much dependent dependent on, on on which card you get in in the draw so, it sure is. I know that all too well. <laughs> so I think my advice is practice with a different car in every session you do. Let's say you're going once a month or or even once a week to the track. Use a, a different a couple, of, a couple of times a month. I, I try to work. Times. So try and take a different car in every session. Supplement yeah. that with uh, with a logbook or some kind of uh, notes where you write, okay, card number 75, and you put different points, the handling, the balance, understeer, oversteer, what was good about the cart, what was bad about the cart. And over time, because you're going so regularly, you'll have a record. So let's say it comes to the competition and you're drawn cart 75, you can just refer back to your book. Okay, 75 on this date, on this track conditions, it performed like this. So you, you're prepared, you have an idea of what to expect. And also you go GoPro footage. This is one of the best things because you, you can see that in you know 30 minutes of, analysis together we discuss so much and seen so many things what happens yeah. is if you don't record your footage um or because i know a lot of guys who they have gopros but they're like ah, i can't be asked to record too much storage you miss out on this you forget what you did that time yeah, we all exactly. know from experience you get a lot of adrenaline when you go karting yeah you have fun yeah. after the session you chat with each other but that if you if you have a record of that in, in terms of footage or notes wow you're can really make progress like that. Hundred percent. Yeah, I remember buying a camera yeah. for the second race. So my my first yeah. ever race, I didn't have a camera, and I finished eleventh. And then on the second race, I I bought a, a GoPro Hero three, <laughs> which was very cheap, <laughs> the only thing I could afford at the time. And and yeah, from there on, I started making the videos and uploading them, also analyzing myself because that's the most important thing. And um, yeah, trying to make 
to to see my mistakes and not to repeat it. But one thing I I found very hard is that as I cannot go every week to a karting track because of economy, you know, and uh, it's very hard for me. I have to adapt very quickly in very little time uh, to different cards. So I think in one th in one way that's uh, good for my for my learning process. But on the other way, I I if I train much more, I think I would be at a higher level now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, that's the same. But it is what it is right now. It's been a pleasure, Oscar. Make sure to record your next race. We'd love to have you back on and review that one as well. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I will. Stay in sure. touch and welcome to the Academy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Omar. I appreciate it. It's I, I stay here a little bit for to see the other footage. Uh, you're more than, well, more than welcome. More than welcome. Until the F1 race starts. <laughs> thank you. And also want to say thank you so much for showing me that track. I'm going on a um on a karting road trip through Belgium, Spain, France. Wow. Uh, because I do that every summer. Um, I, I, I don't know if, if any watch. I went to Madeira a, a couple yeah. of weeks ago, and I'm going to try that track. And you're going to have to like mesh me in, in in the thing your lap time, and I'll see what how close I can get to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's stay let's stay in touch. Let me know 100%, when you 100%. when you come here. Okay. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Well, thank you. The thank power you. of social media, huh? <laughs> the power of friends. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Uh, for, awesome. Uh, thank you for this, Omar. I, well, I appreciate it a lot. Guy, you, you, you've just got a analysis, free analysis there. So there we go. We expect the record time, yeah? <laughs> when you uh, go. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, listen, listen, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I'm oh, good, no, quick, I'm quick. not that good. <laughs> we got uh, Pierce. Go ahead, Oh, Pierce. yeah, sorry. Um, I was just wondering if you could do a track guide for Brentwood. <laughs> Great question. Um, As of... Uh, Last year, I've uh, got a 2023 track guide. If you type it in, Brentwood Karting Track oh, Guide. Oh, yeah, no, it, it was for my friend. Um, he... your, your friend? Sorry, um, yeah, because uh, he looked at the guide and he didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, sorry, that was from... That well. Yeah, but that was from July 2023. So I don't know how the track has changed since then. Maybe if they do other layouts. See, that was... I know, because, uh, yep. and and by the way, um, me and Pierce both race in, in the race league. He races in super, ah, which okay. is a slightly a slight. Um, we haven't met each other, but he's just interesting in the chat here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, he races slightly above me in a, in a high level. I'm not. I, you know, my, my my professionalism is indoors, not outdoors. But anyway, um, I, a quick tip for Pierce: if you don't find Omar's guide helpful, there is there is not a guide, but there's a very very good lap done by I think the Super League champion there. We just search up Brentwood Karting Hot Lap. It's in the 34s. I don't know what time Omar got, but it, it's um. That's I would quick. recommend 34s is quick. It is. Yeah. I've got th I've got 34 nine there. Um, I don't know how I managed that at all, <laughs> but um, but uh, one tip I recommend is going off a track guide like Omar's and then using those points, those tips, and then and then uh, uh, that whatever that word is analyzing <laughs> analyzing some of uh, the fastest lap there and trying to combine those two things to make a good lap guide there you go oh yeah no it's just it's for my friend joseph <laughs> right is that is it uh, is there some sort of joke i'm, I'm, I'm really <laughs> i think we're missing the joke here <laughs> oh, yeah, no, sorry, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the call with him he just he just said a joke but um no um yeah, no, he doesn't understand Brentwood that well. He doesn't understand the guide. So I was just wondering if you could break it down for him. Of course, of course. Well, you've got a guy there who can hopefully take you guys through some footage. I think you've got some footage, I will right? try my best. Yeah, well, 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 Pierce, Pierce, man, you're better than me. You're in supers. Why don't you give your friend the track guide? <laughs> because <laughs> okay, I, I... Because you don't have a GoPro button. Use, use Omar's footage and say, okay, yeah, he, could yeah, exactly. bit closer, he could be a little bit closer to the barrier yeah. here. He could be a little bit closer to the curb there. The one tip I can give you is if he races in the league there, practice in the rain because it is constantly raining in the UK and <laughs> and Brentwood is a really difficult track to do in the rain in my opinion. So just practice in the rain. There you go. Amor, is this GWI, the guy from uh, the last the last stream? That is. is, oh, is, is, is Gui. Is, 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 is Gui racing? It's uh, Gui, Omar, yeah. before, guy Gui, doesn't matter. Guy Gui. Uh, before, you know, before it gets... Sorry. Before it gets very late, guys, we're going to have to move on to the next uh, bit of yeah. footage. Can I, can uh, I be, before we do, let's go ahead, Connor. 
Let's go ahead, Connor. Sorry, bro. It's just a bit late by me in South Africa, so I'm trying to head to bed. Ah, you joined from but, South um, Africa. Please, go ahead. I was going to mention yeah. that we want to um, we'll have a chat before, before we go on to the next No stress, bro. Um, I'm looking at getting a cart, and I found a, a test driver today. It's pretty cool. It's a 400cc, 24 horsepower, four-stroke. What are your okay. views on four strokes? Well, four strokes are very similar to rental carts, which you pr- probably have driven. What's your experience so far in in karting? Uh, rental rental carts quite a bit, uh, but I'm, I've been racing cars most of my life, so cars, I just okay. decided it's just a fucking sorry. I can't swear on your YouTube. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's an, a very expensive exercise to be racing cars. Yeah, and a lot more than carts, I believe. Uh, well, yeah, much, I'll say something. Can, yeah. I, can I say something to Connor? Go ahead, go ahead. Listen, Connor, if you're trying to get into real like karting racing, I suggest two you stroke. get a two stroke. Yeah, yeah two, <laughs> two stroke. stroke. <laughs> go for a two stroke. Listen, with two stroke, obviously you're going to reach higher RPMs, higher speeds. Yeah. Uh, it's just genuinely a better experience. It's of, uh, it's of course a more expensive form yeah. of karting, but it's worth it. Take it from me. I, and then- I, I would know. And then, and then, in my opinion, and, oh, go on, two stroke for like what two weeks, three weeks now. It's and I've already spent like what I think a hundred something. But trust me, it's it's completely worth it. It is expensive, yeah. but um, the only thing but, is, it's just but, maintenance. Plan. Yeah, it's very bird. It's, it's no, no, yeah, no, no. Well, I was about. I agree with you. Maintenance is very. It's, it was I have a friend. I don't know my friend who also is very tax. You have to take apart the engine every every like fifty hours or so. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That's but correct. Then, but then also, but if I if you want to stick with with four show, which is a lot che- which is a lot easier to maintain, don't get a four hundred cc because they are very heavy. I have raced a, a four stroke in um in Spain, believe it or not, uh, n- mm-hmm. uh, near near Don Sebastian on this amazing mountain track. And th- lots of fun. They're like a motorbike engine right behind your, your back. And they, and they backfire and it's fun. But they are so heavy. If you... Now, I would take the combining. I would take a Rotax chassis. And this is a thing in the UK. I don't have a thing in... Thing, it's called GX200. Yes. And, pro and car. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. You can get a pro car, which is a four-stroke engine on a Rotax chassis. And they are... Fun. Like a I'm lot not gonna fun. lie. I I I hate four stroke race cars. Respectfully, I don't mean to offend anyone, <laughs> yeah. but I genuinely, uh, Omar, you can ask Rui. I genuinely have hate, like a specific amount of hatred for four, <laughs> four stroke race cars. How come? It's, it, but it's, you're putting a rental engine on a race car, which is meant to be raced on high speeds. It's the like putting. In- like on the custom cards, they're not the same as the renter engines. Um, no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's kind of like if you you know what I mean. It's like putting a higher boost engine in a lorry. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's Nothing. like putting a bike engine in a lorry. It makes zero sense. So I'm, I, I still think I'm gonna go with the four stroke option. The well, reason being, yeah, is that like I go for it, Connor. Um, I'm gonna check that uh, Rotax thing out though because I'm gonna still yeah. race my car and um. That's I'd rather spend my maintenance on that. Uh, that yeah. gets quite pricey. So um, I agree. Yeah, yeah, for uh, 100%. sure. 100%. You have to have a budget for, for road tax maintenance every yeah. month. And like recently, I got involved in a big crash. The new radiator. Crash, huh? New, uh, <laughs> uh, what was it? New axle. New side pod. Just, uh, new side pod. Yeah, it just adds up. And then you're out of action for one month. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So but you if, don't have to rebuild the engine every race, right? On the two strokes. No, I've no. been seeing a lot of this shit. Like everyone's like, no, you have to. It's like crazy every like four, four, I think it's 20 hours or something like that. Is that correct? You, you can 20, push, 30 hours. Not you, you, like 10 hours for Miami. And then yes. for like 40 or 50 hours for Rotax. Dude, don't but go for I, Miami. They're so unreliable. Listen, with Rotax. Yeah, no, they're extremely unreliable. True, they're fat, they're quicker though. than Rotax, but they're extremely unreliable. That's yeah, they're extremely unreliable. Listen. I suggest if if you're gonna do it like competitively and you want to be the top, like you want to win. I I know teams they rebuild their engines every every race, like Excel. That's I'm a hundred. Like I don't know, but I'm That's sure true. Excel a hundred percent rebuilds mm-hmm. their engines because they're the most expensive team on the grid in Dubai. Yeah. Listen, they 
if you want to be competitive, competitive, buy like four engines. That's what people do. They buy four <laughs> engines. Four <laughs> engines, two chassis. No, I'm being that serious. I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, I, I'm not joking. I, I know you're being serious, but it's so funny that people have that much money. It's man, the it's amount crazy. of money in the world is like, dude. We have we have the 2022 CEO World Cup son with us racing carts. Jesus, that the thing like, is like it's um, <laughs> I want to keep karting cheap because I, I have a GC3R yeah. race and um, cheap costs, karting cheap. Costs, <laughs> I've never heard those two words match. I'm not sure, but those two words do not rhyme. What cheap <laughs> and carts. Now, with four strokes, it's not bad, bro. Because the thing is, I don't know, like, I'm not to convert to pounds. Um, it's um, like it, it's budget, budget of, karting, and that's what you want to do if you want to keep things lower price. There you go, Connor. I, I'm in, I'm in complete agreement with you. Four stroke, and but but get a racing four stroke. It, it does an amazing job. <laughs> Stop crying, Omar. The other Omar. Omar, <laughs> Omar, Omar, I have a, I have a GT3 RS, dude. Don't worry. When it comes to speed, I'm fine with racing. I want to do cards for like the cheap fun, dude. Wait, which GT3 RS do you have? So that, that, that's 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 nine nine two. Nine nine two, dude. You have the money. <laughs> dude, so, two strokes. Connor, where are you from? The money. Oh let's, my god. Uh, yeah, guys, let's let's dial it back in pause. again, Omar. Let's go just on. let's just bring it back. The the main. Question to ask on is what's your objective with this? Is it to race in a championship? Is it for fun? Uh, that's the, that's the first thing. Yeah. So the how thing are you is planning like, to? Um, like I do with my car. Honestly, I just go to like my club races, have a bit of fun. Um, there's one close by me, like twenty minutes away. So I wanted to just join the four stroke class there because they have quite yeah. a. Okay. I'm, I'm about ninety two kilos. So the cart and me, there's a weight class one hundred and eighty kgs. So super, it, um, super. it's just good fun and there's a lot of races, you know what I mean? See, that Less puts effort. context to, to your yeah. decision. And I would encourage you to go for that. The best thing about four strokes is the maintenance is way less. And it's so much simpler. You know, when yeah. you go into two strokes, wow, it's, uh, it's a rabbit hole you get into. You ideally you need a mechanic uh, yeah. to start up. And then you learn. Yeah, well, the yeah. thing is, also quite you quick, need bro. You need four strokes, strokes, like, the four strokes so they're not that bad. Like, I drove no, no, no. And that thing oh, was pretty really quick, bro. Like, it's pretty quick. And, and, and this is the thing. 24 horsepower is, four stroke 20. is, you know, uh, almost triple a standard rental car, which is nine horsepower. Yeah. yeah? So it's not yeah. that it's slow and the style is different, right? Um, of course. And, and the way the accelerator and, and the rev sort of build up is, is completely different to, to Rotax, for example. You know what I saw that genuinely made me laugh in the UK? Twin engine race carts. Twin engine. No, yeah. those are the the. That's the pro carts. Yeah, that that. Yeah, I that was giggling, cool. man. <laughs> no, but no, but the thing is, it's an affordable championship. Yeah, and it's competitive. They got lots of different rounds. I genuinely, I genuinely and low maintenance because I know you low maintenance. Can, they don't you, can, you can rent them well. out until you try it. Hassi? Don't judge it. That's what I say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Hassi chassis, right? <laughs> the one so, you can rent out. Connor, you'll be doing all this DIY, or you'll have a team. No, 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 I'll do it myself. Um, yep. Basically, that's why I'd like to do four stroke because everything's just easy. Um, but yeah, bro, like, thank you very much for the insight yeah, from GWR and Omar. Appreciate you, brother. But um, yeah, dude, also a very cool channel. I scroll by, I was busy watching cartoon videos and I saw one of your videos and I saw you alive. And uh, it's just pretty so cool much. what you're doing, dude. I'm going to stay subscribed and tune in. It's like, it's... Especially for someone like me that's so new to causing, it's uh, really helpful. Appreciate it. Well, as I said, we're trying to build the international community here. We've got people from all around the world, UK, Spain, South Africa. Um, you well, know, I'm sure you'll do very well, though. We we hope to have you on uh, another session, hopefully with some footage, yeah, of uh, of your experience. Yeah, no, for sure. You can see all my crashes. Oh, I'm going to leave last <laughs> question. Yes. What's the rules on someone bumping you, like, on purpose? Oh, 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 this, 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 this is a topic uh, we can get yeah, you, you can't define on purpose, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can you know, big 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 big. Like, I have to get, fill out my get... racing license thing. Sorry, back. just just one second. Go for it. What were you saying, guys? Uh, well, the, like bumping, uh, you can bump at corner exit, maybe, to... To try to take advantage of the slipstream and work with the guy in front, 
but uh, sometimes uh, you can uh, lose focus and <laughs> accidentally bump in corner entry. So yeah. it, it's a fine margin, you know, you need to be very, very careful with that and calculate very well your braking inputs and your throttle inputs. Uh, 100%, but do you get a time bar or do you get a penalty if it's um, quite like no. a deliberate bump? If it's no, no, that? no. Uh, when when I race at, at Ma- in in the races of Madrid or wherever I go, I I can uh, give a little bump from behind, and it, that's okay. You know, there are some drivers which are a little bit annoyed, but by that, but yeah. we are helping them, so they shouldn't be annoyed. You know what I mean? But yeah. then, but, but then I will say it does greatly depend from from from, from even pro karting, road tax, and to rental driving. Like for instance, like. I did a I did a twelve hour endurance race again. Oh my, my was at Lakeside, and there Ooh, was so okay. much like little bit of bumping there yeah. because it's okay in rentals. But Connor, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna be in like a a pro car with with a four stroke, be careful because that front bumper. So, so mm. Some places, if they see your front, yeah, it can be very very dangerous because uh, you can make the other driver uh, spin spin, you know, and and cause yeah. an accident. Because yeah, the, that's that's I don't want to do it. That's what I was saying. Because if I'm in a race, because I'd get a bit upset if I'm honest. If I've just bought a new cart and someone hits my cart, I'm gonna give them a slap. So I just wanted yeah. to know what's the rules <laughs> if I'm if I'm only, only in the straight lines. So, only in the straight lines. If okay, you're doing a race, you. you'll have a driver's uh, briefing beforehand. Just give us one moment, Omar Sleem. So you're gonna have a briefing beforehand and they're gonna clarify the rules. You'll have a chance to yep. Uh, ask the race director questions and they make their stance very clear from the briefing that guys uh, we're the officials for today we tolerate this we don't tolerate this and it'll be clear for everyone now especially uh, as a guy was saying the kind of chassis that your your carts are you don't have that big bumper around it like a typical you know rental car so drivers are more respectful if you look at some of the crashes in in open wheel carts People flip, you know, it, it gets quite messy. And in rental carts, you get more aggressive drivers because they have the freedom of having that bumper. And then really they do subtle maneuvers. They, they'll be right behind you in the corners. They'll push you off the line. And off board, somebody watching in the stands, it doesn't look like anything happened. It just looked like the guy in front missed his breaking point. <laughs> but um, that's... Uh, that's that, that, that's subjective, as I said. It will be clarified by the race director. Stay out of trouble, but generally people are more respectful in open wheel cards. So, you know. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I needed to know. Appreciate it. Yeah. Adding on to that as well, well in owner karting, you have um, the front bumper drop down penalties. If you hit someone at the front too heavily, yeah. then you'll get a, a penalty for it, um, which oh, not a lot okay. of people know. But So that's Very something else point. that can be taken into consideration. Well, Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining, Connor. It's been a pleasure. Hope you all have lots of fun. Will do, will do. Cheers, guys. Omar. Oscar. I, I'm going to leave now because I, I have to go, but it was a pleasure and knowing people Likewise. all around the world. Thank you for making this possible and, and for reviewing, reviewing my video. Uh, um, yeah, I, I'll be back whenever I can. Uh, it will be a pleasure to be here again. We look uh, forward to that. Yeah, just one thing. Um, I, I, I see a lot of people uh, chatting between each other. So if anyone wants to talk with me, I, I, w- I can leave my Instagram down here if you don't mind. Of course. Yeah, of course, of course. Go for it. Yeah, I, and uh, actually, yeah. And, if and anyone even... wants to contact me or, or any other people want to do the same, you know, I think it's cool because uh, they can talk between each other. And even better as well, you guys are all on the Academy platform. So put a comment in there, you know, make a subject, whatever it is, and start a discussion. You know, there's just looking at it now, we have 360 people. So plenty of okay. people to chat to as well. Can, uh, leave can it anyone there. make a post or only you? Uh, everybody can make a post. Everybody can make a oh, post. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm recently new to this, so I'm not. Very yeah, familiar. yeah. It's a, uh, it's, it's a bit like Discord. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, and and thank, thank you, you much. Uh, see it's you been a pleasure. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.
Have a good one. Adios. Okay. <sighs> Final footage of the night, and then we'll answer some more questions. We got some from Pierce as well, and uh, Joseph. Review footage. Let's review footage. Because it's been a while since we've uh, we've got someone on, and we got Omar Sleem. So we're back at the Lucille track again, huh? <laughs> Entire screen downloads. Let's go. And you got some nice footage, I have to say, because really? it's the daytime, right? It's kind of. It's kind of what's it called? Who, who's this? Uh... Oh, that's my friend from school. Oh, oh th- th- that's your friend. Okay. I it's, thought that was. Yeah, it's it's kind of the footage isn't clear. Uh, let's skip ahead. Uh, what day and time is this? I'm not sure what day, but I think it's two to four. That's Saturday then. That's the Saturday session. Ah, oh, yeah, you can. See. That that's awesome. I think one of my first laps. But Omar, the video isn't really clear. Uh, on your side. Yeah. How about now? No, yeah, now now that's fine. But when it's on. It's uh, it really lags, you mean? Yeah, it lags, exactly. Yeah, yeah, the lag. I'm going to try and get that solved for next time. Don't worry. Uh, we're not going to run... We're not going to watch it in in, in total. I uh, want to break it down, freeze frame it. Uh, if we go to the start line, right? Uh, main thing I was discussing with Hamza, actually, is your hand position. Hand. We did discuss briefly about it. What we want you to do is as opposed to being quite low, which is eight o'clock, four o'clock, especially on your steering wheel, try and hold it just below the red. Uh, oh, so you want me to be like uh, the European champions, huh? Well, the champions for a reason. That's uh, advanced techniques, yeah? This is on a clock would be 10 o'clock and two o'clock. Nice and high. Now, what, what does that allow you to do? It allows you to do the push-pull technique, as we discussed. So just like I did with Hamza, I want you to, if you hold your hands up in front of you, do it with me. We're entering turn one. Turn one is a left-hand corner. So you got your hands in front of you now. With your right hand or your right arm, you want to be pushing on the steering wheel, right? Pushing it away from you. And the left hand should be pulling ever so slightly, yeah? Uh So right arm pushing against the wheel. Left hand and arm pulling ever so slightly. So what this will do, it's going to minimize the steering angle that you put in. Yeah? The yeah, steering input. What you want to do is uh, zero steering, neutral steering. Uh, if we just play a bit of your footage, let's see. You, you, you're you actually attempting that. If you just look at the top part of your wheel at all times, you're putting only a few degrees uh, of steering input, right? You're not going 90 degrees all the way to the right or left. You're you're trying to limit that. Look, you, you even adjusted your hands there ever so slightly, slightly higher. Uh, talk to me about this session, though. What was uh, what was good? What was not so good? What were you struggling with? I don't really remember much, but I know that like, in the sector you're at now, I was kind mm-hmm. of struggling there. Okay, let's work on sector three. Uh, overall, at the track, is it you're still? You know, struggling I'm still with getting used to the or... line because today yeah. I was trying something different. You know, after the, yeah, there, there. You see, after the curb, mm. today I would like turn in so I can try to get as much angle as possible. Mm-hmm. Okay, so taking a tighter line basically for for this. Oh no, one. not there. Like, sorry, I take a wider. Like, I take it wider, okay. then I turn in. Ah, so you're trying to use the track on yeah, the left. I, side, I yeah? try to use as much track as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the way you want to go. I mean, in this clip, you are within the white line. The reason you want to go all the way to the outside over here is the angle of the corner becomes wider for you, right? Don't limit yourself. Mm-hmm. You see, this is obviously old footage, but what you're doing here is you're making it tighter. Yeah. Tighter the corner, more you have to turn, more you have to break. The wider you enter the corner by half a cart, so at least half the cart should be on the blue and white. You put less steering input in. Uh, you can brake less, and that means you're on the power more. Uh, what I would still recommend, though, is taking a tight line. Yeah, it's nice and tight over here. Have you experimented using the curb for turn four? Uh, Maybe getting onto really. a bit of the curb. 
But I am thinking after maybe the championship or during the championship after I buy tires and brake pads yeah. and like finish buying everything, I'm thinking of starting lessons with you for sure. Yeah, let's uh, let's work on that after. We can do more focus training like that. But in the meantime, you know, you've got lots of sessions. So like next session, whenever you go sometime next week, try and get onto the curbs a bit more for, for turn four. Especially for turn five, though, you want to close that distance. Actually prioritize getting onto the curb. Well, uh, the truck is in Lucille, Qatar. For, uh, for for turn five, yep. Uh, P.S. This is the Lucille karting track. Now you might recognize the layout, but uh, from the videos, the YouTube videos. But I normally record it at night time, right? It's very hot in the day. This was probably forty degrees. You're racing in, right? Oh so yeah, were... <laughs> everyone was dying in the pits. Everyone <laughs> was on the ground, water on their faces. Everyone was done. <laughs> Two p.m. is hot. That's just after the sunrise. I can take that for sure. Wider. 100%. Exactly. Just just by looking at this, one thing I noticed today, this was something huge I discovered. Putting half of the tire on this curb and riding it. So you don't just go on the curb. No, you actually want to ride it in a straight line. You see the yellow line? That's how much you can be on it in a straight line. Mm. If you don't mind me asking, uh, yeah, what was your timing today? 49.9 right at the end. I've got the timings here. Yeah. And and that's on very used tires. Yeah. That's on more the, than me? Much more. Mine are dead. Like they're dead, dead. But you will struggle to get into the 40 second lap times on dead tires. You know, it's it's a miracle if you can get <laughs> anywhere near. That's just how the tire wear is, and especially because we're using the Vegas, they they wear out uh, a lot. So on uh, on fresh tires, hopefully you'll you'll have that for the next session. And even if it's not fresh tires, just generally ride this curb. This is a new thing that I've, I discovered from today's session. Gave me a lot more grip and traction. And just like I was explaining to Hamza earlier, is this corner, our left right chicane. So you want to boost the cart over it. Yeah. Mm. It's going to feel sketchy. It's going to feel like... A, oh, yeah. I've done it a million that. times. It's, <laughs> ugh, I hate it. And and you I get thrown around in the seat, right? Like, you feel it on your on your body, right? Yeah, like your body jumps up. Exactly. Well... I might do it here. It's... Not sure. No, you... I think... You skipped in this one. Uh, yeah, you, you just missed it. It's okay. But going back to it, what what we're trying to do is hit it at the right angle right? And you'll notice it's quite late in the corner. You see, it's just over here. That is exactly where everyone was hitting it. The darker the patch is on the curb, that means the more carts have gone over it. Jump over the curb there, and your objective of doing this is on exit, which is just here, as opposed to being where you are, which is pretty much in the middle of the track, you want to be on the left-hand side, yeah? Yeah. Reason you on the left hand side is so you have a wider entry for turn eight, the fast right. And ideally, you want to be feeding the power from this point, from this point, feeding the power, feeding the power. What happens is if you go too deep in this corner, you overshoot, uh, you on a similar line like you are now. It's about here. Let me just bring it back one second. So you go wide, and it's about here, I would say, now you start feeding the power. Yeah? You see how mm -hmm. late that is in the corner? Like yeah. we've already reached turn eight and we're, and we're not even on full power yet. So prioritize the exit. Uh, and, and, and the best way to do that is just slowing things down for turn seven. So, but you know, I followed yeah. Damim and Badr and they kind of take the line I'm taking. Obviously, like, in that section, like, on entry of turn eight, they kind of... Yeah, kinda well, they, they, they take almost a straight line. No, it depends on the tires. See, especially when you have worn tires, you're going to slide the cart a lot more and it's going to... It's not going to be balanced. On fresh tires, wherever you put it, it'll more likely grip and you just got to take care of throttle application and braking. That's it. What happens if you try and take a... If you take the same line, right... Uh, you will actually be slower than a guy on, on, on faster tires or fresher tires. This same line, it's more difficult to do. 
the more used tires are. So make it easier on you. Try, try to widen it up. That's all. Get, oh no, this is when my hand positioning used to be horrible. That's what I oh was my mentioning. Days. No, it was like really low. That's yeah, my regular really hand positioning. That's, <laughs> that's my regular hand positioning. <laughs> oh, that's regular. Okay. Like it was low. It's you know how? It's because I think I got used to driving Hamza's cart because I was shorter. Okay. So I'll okay. just I'll just get used to holding it from the bottom. I'm just checking the chat over here. Gui Gui Racing. He put he disconnected. Yeah, sadly, I wanted him to uh, watch it. Yeah, they give you some input uh, next time. Inshallah. Uh, let's just finish off as we're approaching 11 o'clock. You wanted to focus on the final sector, yeah? That's uh, that's where no, you were not struggling. There, not, yeah, here. Let me just bring it back. Uh, the final sector, right? It starts from this red line. Oh, no, that, there I'm not really struggling. Actually, I kind of am. Uh, yeah, I, I, I need to start from here because all these corners connect, believe it or not. Turn 14, yeah. 15, 16. These are all uh, connected corners. And it it's about how you start the sector. So what you should be doing over here is, first of all, tell me where you're looking. Where are you looking? As you approach over here, where are you looking? I'm kind of looking towards the cone, kind of. You're looking like here. at the curve. Wow. Okay, yeah. you're looking at the curve. Yeah, kind of there. That's interesting. Why want you to think of, and especially in championships, there's normally a marshal who's standing somewhere where my yellow lines are. Yeah, you want to be looking towards that, uh, almost between straight line, basically. Yeah, straight line in between these two light posts. Yeah, look ahead there. What that allows you to do is still enter this in a straight line as possible. You're still going to get close to the curb. However, it forces you to take a later apex. So you looking ahead over there. You see what's happened is you're already turning your steering wheel to the right. You oh, need to yeah. strain a straight line. I'd almost think overshoot the corner. If there was a marshal standing there, you want to try yeah, and I overshoot it now. I, I don't you do overshoot that anymore. It, yeah. Well, the reason we're doing that is so you can break late, have a sharp late turn over here. And then take, that's not a very good illustration. This is a late apex, yeah? This is where you want to hit the apex. Skip the early apex. Skip even oh my the middle days. apex. Hit the late so, apex. Tomorrow we have the championship and owner cards. That's if you're doing the owner card sessions. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm doing that for sure, for sure. It's only quality tomorrow's for the championship, so it's like 10 minutes, don't worry. <laughs> Warm up and then quality, so yeah, 20 minutes. Let's just finish off. See, in this case, you turned too early. You went for the apex too early. And what's happened is, where we should be on the curb, we've overshot. We are you know what I'm kind of doing? I'm looking at the rubber lines. I know. Don't look at that. Uh, see, that deceives you. Because okay. you should... No. See, theoretically it is, but if you look at your line, where are you compared to the apex? This is the rubber lines. And this is the apex. Where should you be? Left or right? Oh, uh, right. You should be on the right, exactly. And the reason you want to be on the right is to set up turn 15, right? Turn 15, it's a very sharp left-hander. It's basically a hairpin. And look at what you've done. You're going from left to right. Let me just slow that down one more no. time. You've gone wide on exit of 14. Now you're in the middle of the track. And now to set up for 15, now you're going to go all the way back to the right so then you can open up the angle of the corner. I don't the really left. do that anymore. I just you don't. I know. Straight now. I'm just giving you tips based on this footage, and ah, it's good okay. if you've changed that. So avoid doing this zigzag, basically going out, coming all the way back in. What happens if you took a later apex? You stay on the right hand side, so you don't even have to bother about the entry. You're you're naturally in the right position for it. Now, when you have a wide entry. Two wheels on the green, that's uh, that's my advice. You know, late apex over here, stay on the green on the right-hand side. Oops. And then open up the angle for the corner, yeah? Hit the inside curb. Let's just see what happens on this lap. Yep, good effort, good effort. I mean, sometimes, have you tried hitting half of the curb? Let's say half of it over here. 
Sometimes I do want to hit the curbs, but I'm like, oh, it's too risky. Mm-hmm. Oh, I might spin out. Because today, especially, I was really pushing. Yeah. And uh, since I was pushing, I spun out on the last turn. I spun okay. out on that. And then Amy hit me. Yeah, that, that's what happens. That's that happens. We were battling the whole time. Yeah. So she, you... so she was behind me. And then, bam. <laughs> I saw you're just her. Gonna guys. Stay, you, 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 <laughs> you're just going to stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was standing it's difficult. It's laughing. difficult. <laughs> but it's courting. It is. It's got last, last two corners. So what we've done is taken a wide entry. We're trying to ride this curb. What I've seen the top drivers do is they come all the way out over here. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they they come almost to the white line. So they're maximizing the track width. And then they'll come back to the middle like you're doing. Yeah. This is a very interesting final two corners. What I say is you're breaking into the corner for the first Oh, round. I don't break at all. Really? Actually, no, I kind of yeah. do. You have to break. Slow it down. This is all about slowing fast down. Because... What you do is you you break into the into the first uh, right over here, breaking, 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 and then it's here, exactly here. You start feeding the power back on power again, so you can exit the corner. Yeah, is it okay for you like to look out to like a lap more so I can see if I'm doing the same mistakes? Let's do it. Let's let's, uh, let's run this. Yeah, lap. I hit the curb. It's okay if it's a bit laggy. It's fine. We can. Can make do. Yeah, no worries. Overall, yeah, you can see me hitting the curb, hitting the curb, hitting the, Hit curb, the curb. Nicely done there. Going the way. Coming much closer. Look at Hit that it. beautiful. Hit it there. Yeah. Missed it slightly there. Entry. We discussed. You can be a bit more on the be uh, for sure. outside. Cut to the left. Late apex, nice through there. Just watch coming into the hairpin. You can see me turning my head so I can look. Beautiful. Really, really nice. I think I started hitting that. Yeah, curve. look at this. Look at this. I started hitting it because of Muhammad. Muhammad kept saying, hit it, hit it, hit it. <laughs> uh, this he one? always kept reminding me on that exact turn. This one? Yes. You have to. I, I agree with Muhammad. <laughs> you have to hit it on this curve. Final uh, sector. Let's just see how you do over here. Nice. Closer. You're much closer there. Still, we have the zigzag. You go from out back to in. Nice. Do you mind following me tomorrow and telling me what I'm doing right or wrong? Let's do it. we we, we got to do some laps together tomorrow. Yeah, if I can have some footage from you. Boom, and that's a lap. So, a couple of things. Last sector, that's what I feel that you need to be working on. Oh, everyone left? And just going back to our live. Everyone it looks left. like everyone is at, because we're approaching 11 o'clock. We've done this now for two hours. It's been a great, oh, great, great hours. session today. Thank you for everyone for joining. Thank you for staying to the end, Omar. <laughs> Last one <laughs> standing. And let's hopefully catch up for the next track help session. Sunday, 9 p.m. or 6 p.m. GMT next week. And see everyone there, yeah? See you tomorrow. Take care. See you. Bye.